Department of Transportation Commissioner Polly Trottenberg is now holding a press conference to discuss the new 14th Street busway. So that pilot program for the busway, it's going to go into effect tomorrow. Let's go ahead and listen in right now as she explains the entire plan. We'll be studying the pilot in the interim, both DOT and the MTA. We will also be having an independent consultant take a look at how the pilot is working in terms of bus speeds, travel times, roadway safety, and traffic effects on neighboring blocks. Our goal is to speed up the M14 bus. It is one of the slowest buses in New York City. It has seen in the period of about five years a decline in ridership of about 30%. It's gone from about 36,000 rides a day to 27,000 rides today. And we would like to try and reverse that trend, increase ridership, increase the speed and reliability of the bus trip. These new rules are going to be enforced both with cameras from DOT and New York City Transit, and you'll be hearing from New York City Transit, as well, of course, as NYPD. A lot of concern has been expressed in the neighborhood, and obviously there, there's been a lot of controversy about the effects of this project on side streets. I want to reiterate here, you know, one of our goals is to make sure that we're minimizing traffic and impact on side streets. Chief Chan will talk about that. As I say, we will be studying this pilot as we go forward and trying to make adjustments wherever we see problems in doing troubleshooting. So with that, I would like to introduce my partner in a lot of things we do here. From the MTA, Craig Cipriano, who is currently the acting senior vice president of the City Transit Department of Buses, is going to talk about what the MTA will be doing and how they'll be doing camera enforcement. Craig, come on up. Thank you, Polly. Thank you, Polly. Thank you. So welcome, everyone, and thank you for coming to 14th Street today. It's been a long journey, but the day has finally come for our 14th Street customers. We finally have our dedicated busway, and we are absolutely thrilled. It's no secret to anyone that bus speeds across the city are slow. In Manhattan, they're barely six miles per hour. And right here on 14th Street, they're less than five miles per hour. We knew we needed to make a drastic change. So three months ago, in partnership with DOT and NYPD, we launched Select Bus Service. And we brought on all the great things we knew we could do to speed buses along. Off-board off -board fare payment, all-door boarding, and better bus stop spacing. Since then, bus speeds have gone up by 10%. And now, just think of the difference our new busway will make for our 26,000 daily customers that use the M14 SBS each and every day. To make the most of this dedicated new busway, we will be helping our city partners enforce traffic laws to keep our bus lanes clear. We will be using forward-facing cameras to capture evidence of bus blockers. This program starts next Monday, October 7th, on the M15 Select Bus Service, and by the end of November, it'll be right here on the M14 SBS. And to prove just how serious we are, the fines for bus blockers were recently updated. There'll be a 60-day warning period. After that, if you're caught in the bus lane or the bus way, the first fine will be $50. Second fine will be $100, and there's a graduating fine structure up to the fifth fine, which will be $250 in any 12-month period. So the message is loud and clear. Stay out of our bus lane and out of our bus way. So to 14th Street customers, today is a big day, something new and wonderful. And to all our MTA customers, we're moving our buses faster and we're providing a better service. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you, Greg. And now again, because we recognize it's going to take time for folks to get used to how this new uh, bus lane is going to operate. We're going to be hand in hand with our partners at NYPD, led by Transportation Chief Thomas Chan. Okay. Um, good morning, Commissioner Tromberg, um, MTA buses, uh, Greg Cipriani, and our uh, travelers here. Uh, the New York City Police Department will be deploying traffic enforcement agents and police officers to the 14th Street Transit and Truck Priority Corridor, as well as the surrounding areas to assist the commuting public in all phases of this pilot project. This project which prohibits left turns off of 14th Street between 3rd and 9th Avenue, which will alleviate the bus backups as a result of turning vehicles impeding traffic. Left turning vehicles are three times as likely to cause an injury or a fatality, so it's important for prohibiting this action will increase pedestrian and bicycle safety along the corridor. So, with the new regulations along the corridor, with, 
With the new regulations along this corridor, the NYPD reminds you that driving safely, obeying all the traffic rules here and across New York City will not only avoid consequences of our enforcement, but also will make our streets safer and save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. We've had a lot of partners who've helped work with us on this project and want to hear from them now, starting with uh, one of our big supporters, Danny Perlstein from the Riders Line. Sam, come on up. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Thanks to Commissioner Trottenberg and her colleagues at DOT for keeping the faith in this busway. This is something we've been working on for a couple of years now, and we've been close, and tomorrow we'll be here, and that's thanks to an incredible amount of perseverance and persistence and commitment to delivering for bus riders from the commissioner and from the city of New York. And thanks also to the MTA. You know, a lot is made of, uh, you know, fighting between the city and state and how well bureaucracies work together, but there has been really a beautiful friendship and partnership between the MTA and the DOT throughout the work toward the L train shutdown, the L, but became the L train slowdown and on this busway. So it is really a wonderful thing when our agencies deliver a public service together when they work that well. That's incredible. And I want to thank other advocates as well. Uh, Transportation Alternatives, Tom DeVito, right behind me, um, Erwin Figueroa, Chelsea Yamada, Mark O'Connor. Amazing, amazing organizing work and advocacy throughout this project. We could not have done it without them. Riding with them has been absolutely wonderful as well as with Adriana Espinosa here from the League of Concert voters, thank you. Um, this is a wonderful day for bus riders. Tens of thousands of bus riders on 14th Street and millions of bus riders stuck in slow traffic throughout New York City. We have the slowest buses in the nation, but soon we won't. And again, that's a testament to the incredible work of, of advocates and our officials in public office and leaders here. Um, and that's tremendous. Um, there's going to be a lot more work to do. As folks from the MTA and DOT know, um, there will be more shutdowns. There will be more slowdowns as we modernize our transit system in particular as we fix the signals on the subway and that will necessitate better more efficient more affordable use of our streets and that's going to be in more busways citywide so we are we are eager to advocate and organize for those we're eager to work with our partners here to make that a reality to make sure that the city continues to function as the subway is fixed and modernized for the 21st century um, you know, and just sort of panning out a little bit to the context here, um, we have repeatedly been warned, and I think New Yorkers take it to heart very personally, that climate change is real and climate change is here. And that addressing that, you know, first and foremost, requires taking a look at some of the low-hanging fruit. And the fact is the car culture in New York City is really low-hanging fruit when it comes to breaking and mitigating and adapting to climate change. New Yorkers do not rely on cars. We don't need to rely on cars. And what we do need is for our leaders to lead us toward a carless or relatively carless future. Overwhelmingly, New Yorkers commute by public transit, rely on public transit, and increasingly that's what we're going to have to do, and, and that's the brighter future the city can look forward to. Thank you so much. And you mentioned another fantastic partner in our efforts here, uh, Tom DeVito, Senior Director of Advocacy at Transportation Alternatives. Tom. Commissioner, thank you so much. Uh, I am Tom DeVito. I'm the Senior Director of Advocacy at Transportation Alternatives. It is not every day that tens of thousands of transit riders wake up and the slowest bus that had been their commute every single day has turned into one of the fastest buses. This is really tremendous. And it would not have happened, as Danny said, without the firm leadership and vision of Mayor de Blasio, as well as Commissioner Tr Trottenberg and her amazing team. They have spent years advocating for uh, better buses, uh, going to community meetings, getting that feedback, uh, working with uh, advocates and volunteers in the community. Uh, I also want to thank the volunteers uh, who have spent years doing all of those things as well. As Danny mentioned, we are on the cusp of a climate crisis. We are in the middle of a congestion crisis. Our transportation systems are facing stresses that they have not seen in decades. We're going to need to see more uh, projects like this going into the future. And we are eager uh, to work with the city, uh, work with the MTA, work with elected officials, work with local volunteers every step of the way to make sure that we are rising to those challenges. Thank you very much. 
I appreciate Danny mentioning climate change and, you know, as a city, I think we, a lot of us share the goal of wanting to see how we can reduce carbon emissions. And so we are also really pleased that the League of Conservation Voters has become a partner in our work here. And I want to call up Adriana Espinoza to say a few words from the New York City LCP. Um, I'm Adriana Espinosa. I'm the New York City Program Director at the New York League of Conservation Voters. We are honored to be here after more than a year of advocacy for the 14th Street Busway. Most people think of buses as transit, but the League of Conservation Voters, we understand that it is also a means to fight climate change and improve air quality. Uh, plainly speaking, we cannot drive our way out of the, cri the climate crisis, and prioritizing transit is a key way of um, providing cleaner air and getting folks out of cars. When better bus service means New Yorkers are more incentivized to take public transit. That's good for that's good for our economy. That's good for our climate. And we were honored to be part of this fight. Thank you to the DOT for ne for never giving up, and thank you for transportation alternatives and all the volunteers and organizers that helped make this happen. Thank you. And I'm sure we have questions, but before we do, I want to take a minute speaking about a team that has persevered uh, in the face of a, of a project that has had a lot of twists and turns. Maybe we'll raise their hands. Eric Beaton, Janet Jenkins, Jeff Peel, Kimberly Rancourt. Who, did I miss anybody? No, oh, Aaron Segura. All right. These folks need a round of applause. Would anyone have a question? Commissioner, you mentioned the opposition. Can you speak to that and the concerns that a lot of the residents have about through traffic on the side streets and what they can expect starting tomorrow? Right. That, that has certainly been a concern we've heard. And, and just to be clear, you know, as we've worked through this project and now what is, has been sort of a few years, a couple of adjustments we made to the project itself to speak to that. We're allowing, again, just to be clear, local pickups and drop-offs, so your taxis, your Ubers, you need to drop someone off, deliveries, those can all still happen on 14th Street. Likewise, because one concern we heard from the side streets was would trucks divert, we're also going to allow trucks to go through. So hopefully some key part of the traffic will not be flowing to those side streets. We're going to be working closely with PD to discourage excess traffic to going to those side streets and monitoring it closely. And what we have seen, for example, when we talk to our counterparts in Toronto with their King Street streetcar project, is it took a couple weeks to settle in and there will be a little period of settling in here. The traffic really didn't hugely impact the side streets. It sort of spread, some of it went away and some of it spread itself out further into the grid. But we will be monitoring that very carefully. We know that is a big concern for folks. Just a couple weeks to settle in. How long, how quickly do you expect to see, uh, you know, bus speed improvement? Do you expect it overnight? I, I never expect anything overnight. I mean, I would say it's interesting. In the case of Fresh Pond that we just put in, we, we saw improvements pretty quickly, but I, yeah, I don't know whether the team would like to... A week or two. Yeah, week, week or two. And obviously, we, we will be very transparent and reporting on all the data here. So, you know, again, just to reiterate, this is a pilot, which means we're going to see how the results go. We'll be making adjustments as we go. But with bus projects, we usually see, yeah, see improvements in a couple weeks. How fast do you expect these buses? Our chairman here. All right, we'll have him speak after we take Dana's question. I don't know. Are we? A, are we? A, I mean, we have seen generally bus speeds improve 20 to 30 percent in places where we've done this. So, yeah, I, versions of this. Yeah, we've never done anything quite this aggressive. So. I don't, know. I don't know whether Eric wants to give an opinion on bus speeds. We, th we think that the bus speeds will go up in the neighborhood of 25%, of you know, the 20 to 30 range. But we think it will also be very reliably that fast, where it won't just be fast some of the time, but slow other times. That With this kind of treatment, we'll really see buses go fast regularly, which means people can count on that travel time savings. 25 to 30% of 5 miles per hour. <laughs> so we, we, we think people will save, you know, five minutes a trip or something, which added up over the course of the year is really very meaningful. All right, so before we take another question, we have we are joined by the Council Transportation Chair, who has been a big partner and supporter in our Vision Zero work and our bus and bike lane work. So let's hear a word from him, Chairman Edonis Rodriguez. I, I have said over and over that the city of New York is so a, a lucky to have someone that not only is a great New Yorker, 
but also someone that have a national experience when it comes to transportation. And that makes a big difference because she being in other cities, she being in other countries, and we are committed again to be a partner to make the city of New York the role model when it comes to making, turning our street more pedestrian and cyclist friendly. Uh, this is something that we will accomplish. We, we will not go backward. Enforcement is going to be needed. I believe that Fortune Street can be the role model for what we expect to the whole city of New York. We have a great opportunity to turn the bus system as they above the train services in our street. Uh, it should not be a negative experience for a rider to take the bus and, and be waiting hours to go to the destination. And I feel again that enforcement is needed. What will happen in, in Fortune Street, uh, again, I hope will be the role model for all boroughs. You know, buses that they are stuck at the South Bronx. They are also at 181st in St. Nicholas, yes, waiting. Not because there's not enough buses, not because there's not enough drivers, but yes, because dri car drivers are blocking the buses. And I believe, again, that this is the message should be, you know, the buses should have priority. They are the one that carry on dozen of riders. You know, when I see someone, and I have a car too, I'm one of those 1.4 million New Yorkers that, have, that, that, that use a car, as I also use my metro car. But the reality is, we need to rely on buses, on trains, and the enforcement that we will see from now on, the use of the, of the camera will be a additional important tool that now I believe they will be used by all of us. The DOT, the NYPD, and, and as I said before, I believe that enforcement is what we need in order to bring solution to how slow our buses are riding in our streets. And as I, we, we will be supporting this initiative, I also have introduced a language for legislation to create a bus traffic enforcement unit. Uh, we believe that, again, that we have to send a zero tolerance message to everyone, including myself, that has a car. We need to respect our bus drivers. They have priority, and it's not to stay in the bus lane for a couple of minutes. Yes, stay for one minute. It's enough for someone to get a ticket so that they know that we need to uh, dedicate the streets for the bus drivers. Para mí lo importante es que el mensaje que estamos mandando es que tenemos una comisionada con experiencia a nivel de la nación que queremos hacer de la ciudad de Nueva York un modelo en los Estados Unidos donde se respeten las líneas de autobuses, donde los que tenemos vehículos entendamos que no podemos bloquear y para eso vamos a trabajar con la policía para que se haga el enforzamiento necesario para que los que usan los autobuses lleguen a tiempo a su lugar de trabajo, a su cita médica o a las escuelas. Thank you. Thank you. sort of talk about the DOT role, and I think we'll have PD and, and New York City Transit talk about their role. And you can see, um, again, the goal of this project is if you live on this block, you will, you will be able to get your pickups, your drop-offs, your cabs, etc. You will have to just take the first right off the street when you're driving on it. It will be enforced on the DOT end. We will have our stationary cameras like we have in many other bus lanes. And if you've seen some of our other camera enforced bus lanes, you know how it works, which is you're allowed to get into the bus lane to take a right lane off of a street. So if you're, I think it's within 250 feet, you get into that bus lane, you're allowed to take the right. It will be the same principle here on 14th Street. I think Craig should talk about the what New York City Transit, how their bus, onboard bus cameras will work, and then Chief Chan on PD and Force. So they're going to be in every single block? Yes. I mean, remember, I just remember, this is an eight-block pilot project. Eight how, blocks. How long is the pilot? 18 months. Chief Chan, uh, can you please... Uh... Well, here, wait, let, let's, let's, let's have... Let's talk about the rest of the enforcement piece. So by the end of November, every single one of our M14 SBS buses will be equipped with the onboard uh, camera system. And the way that camera system works is a anyone that's blocking the busway, right, for more than five minutes, will be taking will be taking uh, will be capturing pictures of the car at that same spot, and then again capturing pictures uh, via um, buses, subsequent buses of that car. 
parked that car or that vehicle, I should say, is in that same spot for more than five minutes, for the first 60 days, we'll be issuing uh, warnings, and then after that, we'll be issuing violations. And then, Chief Chan, you want to... Sure. Can you just give an overview of, you know, how many officers you're going to have out there, what's their routine, what are they going to be doing, what's their strategy, and what can drivers sure. uh, expect? We will have a, a combination of um, traffic agents along the corridor on 14th Street and also police officers. What we're looking to, what we're looking to do is to make sure that the uh, tra um, the, tra the public is informed on what's going on. And again, because we're implementing it uh, um, on Thursday, and what happened is that we're going to move forward. Our agents will be moving traffic along. Vehicles, again, will be allowed to make the right turns, the immediate right turns on 14th Street. Again, this is between 3rd Avenue and 9th Avenue itself. But what happened is that vehicles 24-7 are not going to be allowed to make left-hand turns on this corridor area. You'll see that there are signs that will prohibit turns, left-hand turns, because, again, they slow down our buses, and also they're more problematic for our pedestrian and our bicyclists out there. Uh, eventually, when the cameras are set up, the cameras will capture the people who are committing the violations, and they'll be issued with some through the mail, but also our traffic agents and our officers will be discouraging our operators and mo motor vehicle operators from making those turns unless they have business on the block. But what happened is that we will, again, uh, take the stance so and we'll educate the public, and uh, within 60 days, uh, those cameras are going to go into enforcement, and they'll be issuing summons for that. But again, we wanted to discourage the public from making the turns, and hopefully we'll see uh, dr dramatic and almost immediate improvement in the speeds of our buses. Are you going to be ticketing, are your officers going to be ticketing the drivers starting no. Thursday? No. We'll be educating them. That. But again, if you are an operator and you are, whether you're an Uber or Lyft and things of that nature, if you have no business in dropping off on that immediate block, my, my suggestion is that you get used to it and make the turns. And again, it's just a, a matter of the public getting used to uh, having that ability to so use the street. So when does the ticketing street. start? Yeah. Oh, right, and I want to add, because I didn't mention for our, uh, for our uh, bus lane cameras, there is also a 60-day warning period. So the cameras are on tomorrow. But for the first 60 days, you'll get a warning. The New York City transit cameras are on in November. There'll also be a 60-day warning period, and PD will be doing a warning so period as well. First, is that from the first time you happen to get a thing in the mail? Do you get a 60-day if it's like in February? Or is it 60 no, no, days it's, from it's, it's it, for, for, for us. It's 60 days starting tomorrow. If you get a ticket in the first 60 days, it will be a warning. Okay, After that, days, it's right. a $50 ticket. So, No, no, there is on both, one, one of the things we like about this design, on both sides of the street is pick up, drop off. It's going to be largely pick up, drop off loading zones. So there's actually a lot of street space for that. So that's, that's a lane for that, and then there's just one lane for buses going both ways? Yes. And then sort of a buffer zone in the middle, which, you know, will enable emergency vehicles and some give and take in the street design. You mentioned that was an adjustment made for the local pickups and drop-offs. Any concern that might compromise the goal of helping the buses? I mean, again, part of why this is a pilot, we're going to see how it works. You know, we heard loud and clear and we understood, look, one of the challenges of 14th Street, busy commercial corridor, but also a street with a lot of big residential buildings. So we're trying to balance all the sets of users on the streets, but we'll see how it works. Part of what we liked about the final design we came up with is it enabled us to have full pickup drop-off loading zones on both sides of the streets. So we hope it'll work well, but we'll be monitoring. Commissioner, will, will be, have you guys communicated with any of the major navigation technology companies? Because a lot of Uber drivers blindly follow that. Yes, we have. Uber, with, with, with all the, with Uber and Lyft and Waze and Google Maps and well, Waze and Google are kind Commissioner, of... Commissioner, how are the uh, fines decided and how do you know that there'll be enough to, for, for it to actually deter people from the bus lanes? Right. The fines are actually set by our state legislature. And just so you know, this year, actually, Albany passed a bill which changed the whole way the bus lane system works. It used to be there were only a limited number of bus lanes where we could camera enforce, and the fine was $115, which I think we all thought was pretty high. Now we basically have the ability, both agencies, to camera enforce in any bus lane, but the first ticket is only $50. But the fines do escalate. 
your second ticket is 100, your third ticket is 150. <laughs> One thing we generally find with all our camera programs is most people who get a first ticket don't get a second. So we're hoping if you get that first ticket, but since they escalate over time, hopefully no one is going to consider that the cost of the they go, the ones from the city cameras go to the city, the ones to the MTA will go to the MTA. MTA. Commissioner, it seems like every meaningful project you guys embark on faces litigation these days. Why do you think that is, and uh, how does it impact the morale of the DOT or just your ability to get complete projects to roll them out? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if it's every project, and I, I don't want to sort of over, over interpret what's sort of happened over the past six years. We've had basically four different lawsuits, each of which have had their own, I think, characteristics. We've now, obviously, as of the, the judge's decision on Friday, have the ability to go ahead in three of the four here, Fresh Pond and Central Park West. We're still um, in a temporary restraining order situation up in Morris Park in the Bronx. So. Look, it, it, it's no question, it's it's for us, it's resource intensive, it takes a lot of time. The team here spends a lot of time on depositions and other pieces of the litigation, but I think in the long run, because we do a very thorough and careful job at studying traffic and looking at all the impacts of the projects, we're, we're getting the, after some legal debate, we're, we're getting the go-ahead in a lot. We've now got the go-ahead in three of the four. Rich Lamb, then just a few more. Yeah, Rich. Uh, so this project was born of the possible L train shutdown. But is there any thinking, are there any whispers that if this works, maybe 42nd Street, 23rd Street, other major two-way thoroughfares might end up with the same kind of experiment? And one thing I want to be clear about, this is in part borne by the L train, but I think both agencies were always looking at 14th Street. It is one of the most heavily traveled and slowest bus corridors in the city, L train aside. So. We've always been talking about how we can improve bus service and looking at SBS. There's no question when the when the L train potential shutdown came along, particularly with the help of a lot of advocates, they challenge us to, to think a little bigger. But this is a street we would want to fix no matter what. I think our statement for now is let's see how this one works. Too soon to say whether we're going to spread this to, to other corridors. We want to make sure we get this one right, that we see bus speeds improve, we see safety improve, we don't see terrible impacts on side streets. If we start to see that happy confluence of events, then we'll come back to you all and talk Questions about it. Questions for media, Dan. Nice. Do you think that Office, our officers going to be educated so that people know Sir, that we're taking your questions for reporters right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've gone door to door to all the offices now, mo uh, several occasions, because we've had some fits and starts with this project. Well, you can you can pick up and drop off through here, but you just have to get off on the next block. Yes, so but some of the offices are not letting people do that. Well, they should. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Dana. Do you think that the city can achieve its hoped for uh, annual increase in bus fees that? I mean, I, I think, you know, we are encouraged where even we do something like Fresh Pond, which is not as dramatic an intervention as this, we're already seeing really good improvement in travel time. So we'll keep at it. It's an ambitious goal, but I, I have a lot of faith in this team and some of our other partners. They've done some pretty amazing work around the city. So, Commissioner, Commissioner, Commissioner. How, how, is it, how is traffic going to be handled, let's say, um, just go, what is it, 9 a.m.? That's why part of part of the message today, and we're glad to have you all here, is really want to discourage motorists from thinking about 14th Street as a through street. I, I look, I think we're going to have a couple weeks where everything is going to settle in, but I think as we've seen in other cities that have put these kind of projects together, we hope pretty quickly people will realize it's not really going to make, you know, and by the way, this is a little bit of a trial run for what we might see when we implement congestion pricing in New York City. You know, I'm, I'm hoping pretty quickly there people aren't all going to drive to 59th Street, or I mean rather 61st Street, and then turn. Over time, they'll realize they need to change their routes, you know, to give this stretch. And again, this is an eight block stretch. I think this is a pilot that we're excited about, but it's in the grand scheme of things compared to what other cities are doing, still something pretty manageable in terms of scale. And we're going to encourage people if you need to go all the way across town, 
you're not going to want to do it on 14th. You're not going to want to come to 9th Ave and then make a turn. Take but another cross town route. Think like 23rd Street is going to get all jammed up. And I, I think, other... again, what we've seen in other cities is the traffic sort of spreads itself out over the grid, but that's part of what we will be studying. And again, we will particularly have a lot of NYPD enforcement agents on the ground helping educate, helping pushing people to better routes. We, you know, we have worked closely with all the navigational companies like Waze. Hopefully they will also be directing people to make smart, smart travel choices. Yeah. You know, of all the available right-hand turns, I noticed that Broadway isn't available as a right, but this is, and this doesn't take you anywhere. This forces you to go back around and sort of This is not motivation. available as a right-hand turn. <laughs> According to the chart, yes, no? It is available as a right-hand turn. Yes, it is. Oh, it is? But Broadway is the local access somewhere. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, Broadway gets you someplace. Why aren't they allowed to turn on Broadway? I'm going to let Eric speak to the, it's a very complicated question, the Broadway one. Sure, and, and you see Broadway is actually a turn that got banned several months ago, even a little bit aside from this program. It's one of the busiest intersections in the city. You see the number of people crossing the street there, and we had buses and large trucks turning. So it was really a safety program to try to, to, to not have those vehicles conflicting with pedestrians there. What we do think is that once this set of uh, changes is in effect, there won't be a lot of cars trying to make these turns. You know, it, you'll be able to get onto 14th Street to make your local pickup or drop off, but on any given block, there won't be a tremendous number. So we think that, that the university shared street will handle it, and the Broadway turn restriction has been in effect for several months, and it seems to be going pretty well. All right, last question here, Gabby. Anyone? All right. Thank you all very much. Well, that was Department of Transportation Commissioner Polly Trottenberg holding a press conference to discuss the new 14th Street busway. That pilot program for the busway goes into effect tomorrow. And of course, we will be following this as it is expected to increase speeds and travel speeds by about five minutes a day as you commute through the area. We're going to have much more on this as it continues. But for now, you can get more information on CBSNewYork.com.